what I do first is I open the boxes and flip the bowl over. That allows the cockbird then to access the bowl and he'll go in there and he knows his hen's coming and he'll probably get in that bowl and start calling his hen. I'll leave him in there for five or 10 minutes. Then I'll go get the hen. I'll bring her in and we'll release her and she'll go right to her box with the mate. I'll leave them together for five or 10, 15 minutes. And when that's, when I feel they've been together long enough, I'll go in, I'll catch the cockbirds, I'll put them in a crate, and I'll take them to the race. It strikes me that if you grow up with it, or grow up around it, you know, with a neighbor or a relative or something like that, it just seems kind of natural. Right. But if you've never been around it, and the only pigeons you see are in the, either on City Hall or downtown in the park, you don't really get the whole picture. One of the new members said nobody will tell him anything. He couldn't win. So he said, nobody gives him any tips. And I said, you don't need tips. All you need is a good location and a little bit of know-how. Jason uh, boy, you want a beer? I'll be ready in the hot second. Killed it over the winter. 356. Yeah. Way. The truck driver is here, somebody can block the wall. Okay. 657. All driving, watering the birds, making sure they get flight off right. Watch them, see how they go. Make sure they do their circle. And take care of Raymond. Yep, take care of Raymond. He gets headaches. He bitches about everything. So. <laughs> to come home from the 140 mile race. They should be here any time now. It's been about three and a half hours. Well, here they come. About six or eight of them in back in the back, back in the 60s, we had like 35, 40 members. We're lucky to have 10 members now, so. Go ahead, you guys get a drink of water and eat, okay? 